What's up everybody? In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about all of the things that you need to get started in flying FPV drones and cine whoops. Now there's really three, sometimes four main things that you need, and I'm gonna go through kind of a basic overview of each one of these, as well as some of my recommendations and what I think you should pick up to get started. Now the first thing that you need to pick up is of course a drone itself. Now you could jump into a three or five inch racing drone right off the bat if you know you wanna go into it, but I would really suggest getting into a toy or hobby drone first, especially if you're just starting out. There's a couple reasons for this. One, it's gonna save you a ton of money if you find out that you don't like it. These things only cost about a hundred bucks, so it's a really easy way to get into it, play around with it, see if it's something that you actually wanna spend the hundreds and thousands of dollars to invest in. The other reason is they're meant for practicing. They're toy drones, so you can crash these things. They're super durable. They're gonna get beat up. As you can see, mine has a broken frame here, missing some propeller guards, as well as like a cracked frame above the camera. These things can just take a beating and they can still run super strong. So the main thing I was looking for when I got my first toy drone or tiny whoop, which is just a toy drone with a camera on it, is obviously that it has a camera so I can fly that FPV. I also wanted it to be super durable. This allowed me to crash into things and really go through that learning curve of flying FPV and not have to worry about having to replace this thing so many times. I also wanted to look at the accessories, make sure the propellers, batteries, things like that were readily accessible so I could get them quick if I needed to replace them, as well as just buying extra ones. Having extra batteries is always great. I think I have like 14 batteries for this thing now, just so I can go out and fly all day without having to worry about recharging. Another thing I was looking at when I was researching these toy and hobby drones is I wanted to get one that wasn't super expensive. Just in case I did happen to destroy it, I crashed in some water and completely fried the board, or it took off into the woods and I lost it and I couldn't find it, I didn't want to be out a ton of money. And then the last thing that I wanted this little toy drone to do was to be able to bind with my radio. Because I actually purchased my radio before I got my tiny drone because I was using it on the simulator, which I'm going to talk a little bit about later on. But the drone I ended up going with was the Emax Tiny Hawk because it really fits all of that criteria that I had just mentioned. It comes in at a pretty good cost at $89. It's super durable, like I said, I've busted up this frame and it's still flying super well. And it's really cheap and easy to replace the parts and get accessories for it. If I could go back now, I probably would upgrade to the higher end version, which is the Emax Tiny Hawk S. It's only about an extra $10, but it allows you to use two cell LiPo batteries, and that's gonna give you some extra punch, and it gives you a little bit more room to grow into the drone, rather than being stuck at that one cell, which is really designed for like indoor use. Also with the Emax Tiny Hawk S, it comes with a four bladed propeller, which allows you to do turtle mode. So if you land upside down, you can actually flip it back over without having to mod the Tiny Hawk, which I'm gonna have to do swapping these propellers out for the four bladed propellers. It just comes standard with that. If you do plan on going with the Emax Tiny Hawk S, just be careful when you're putting in the LiPo batteries. Make sure that the drone is set up for the correct LiPo battery amount or the cell amount. Make sure that if you're flying 1S, it's set up for 1S. If you're flying 2S or two cell batteries, it's set up for two cell batteries. You can fry the board if you sort of mix and match these. Next up, you need something to actually control the drone and this is where the radio transmitter comes in. There's a few different options out there from radio transmitters and they kind of fall into three different categories. You have your cheap or low end ones, which basically run from about $50 to $100. You have your mid range, which is about $100 to $200. And then your high end one, which is basically $200 and above, which is really more than most people are ever gonna need. Depending if you wanna get into the three and five inch drones or if you just wanna stick with these toy and hobby ones, I would suggest staying away from that low end. So really try and look for that mid range radio transmitter because that's gonna give you the most flexibility throughout your time as a pilot and flying FPV. Those lower end radio controllers are really only designed for the drones that they come with. Usually you'll buy them in a kit. You also get some limited flexibility with those drones to add in all the different switches and controls and dials and stuff that you wanna have when you're going into those five inch or bigger quads. Now flying quads, we're pretty lucky that we don't need to have a bunch of switches and knobs and sort of control areas, unlike the fixed wing and helicopter pilots. Those ones are gonna need a lot more options for customizing it and allowing you to do different things and having those extra features. I think for most people looking to fly FPV, getting something in that mid range is really gonna be all you need throughout the whole experience from flying toy and hobby drones, going all the way up to the professional five or seven inch racing drones, and eventually doing cine whoops if that's what you wanna get into. I did a ton of research on radio controllers before I ended up getting my first First one and what I ended up going with was the FR Sky Tyrannus QX7 and this comes in sort of on the low end of that middle range of radio controllers and that comes in at about $125. There are a few reasons why I decided to go with this one over some of the other options out there. 
For one, it allows me to bind with everything from hobby drones, which are like these small Emacs Tiny Hawk ones, all the way up to the higher end five and seven inch. So that was a huge thing for me. So I didn't have to go and buy a bunch of different controllers throughout the process. I knew I was gonna be coming in with these hobby drones and going to those racing drones and doing cine whoops. So I wanted to get a controller that would last with me throughout the whole experience. This radio controller can also hook up to my computer, which allows me to fly the simulator. This is super great because it can give me a lot of practice time, especially now that the winters come, I don't wanna go outside and fly because it's just too cold, I can still get some stick time in throughout the winter and then be able to fly a lot in the spring. It's a 16 channel radio, which gives me a ton of options for customizing these switches and dials and everything like that to get basically everything that I need for flying quads and FPV racing drones. It allows me to turn on like beepers, turn on LED lights, flip it into turtle mode, change my different flight modes, everything like that on this one controller. It also has a great reputation for reliability and durability, meaning that it's gonna last a long time and it's also gonna be reliable while you're flying. It's not gonna power down randomly and cause your drone to take off and go flying away or crash into something, and you know you're gonna be able to have control over it when you're flying. Because it's a more popular radio as well, you're gonna have an easier time troubleshooting problems and finding out more information about it and getting support about it. And I've been super happy with mine and I have recommended it to all of my friends who are interested in getting into FPV drones. So now that we have our drone and our radio controller, the next thing that we need to get is a pair of goggles or some way to monitor what the video feed is that's coming out of our drone. Now I decided to go with goggles. You can also go with a monitor, but for me, it really takes you out of the FPV element of it. When you're wearing the goggles, you're just so immersed in what the drone is actually seeing rather than just looking at it on the screen when you're holding it above your controller. Out of these three things, the drone, the controller, and the goggles, the goggles is where you're gonna to wanna to spend money and make sure that you get a high quality pair of them. Now this is for a couple of reasons. One, it's gonna make the experience better because you're gonna be actually more immersed into the FPV flying of the drone. You wanna have good visibility so that you're not crashing into everything because of poor pixelation and stuff like that. And then you also want them to be comfortable and be able to fit on your head, especially if you're wearing them for a long period of time. You don't want them digging in. You wanna really enjoy the experience. If you wear glasses, you might have to look into a higher end of these types of goggles if you wanna get that focused adjustment for your eyes or look into box goggles where you're gonna be able to wear your glasses underneath. For me, I went with the classic style, the sort of fat shark slim style. And there's a couple other features that I wanted to have in my goggles, which is why I ended up going with these ones. So right away, I wanted them to be small and portable. This kind of gets rid of any of the box goggles. They're much bigger, they're harder to travel with, harder to fit in your backpack. These break down super small once you take off the antennas and they can really travel really easily. And that's the main reason I got these over the box style of goggles. Next thing was I wanted diversity. This means that it has two antennas, which allows me to put one on that's omnidirectional, so basically getting everything around me, and then a patch antenna, which allows me to go longer range in one direction. Having that diversity and having the two antennas that are switching back and forth as you're flying allows you to get the cleanest signal while you're up in the air. The next thing that I didn't know I wanted it to have until I actually got these goggles was a fan. These things fog up, especially if you're out on a hot day, they're gonna fog up really quickly and having a built-in fan allows it to get rid of all that air and that moisture so that you're not gonna be fogging up while you're flying and lose sight. If you're getting a pair of goggles, I would definitely recommend that there's some sort of airflow in there, whether it's a fan or just some vents that allow the air to get out so you don't fog up your lenses. Now, the last thing that I wanted my goggles to have was a DVR. Now, this is a digital video recording I think that's what it stands for, but it allows you to record what you're actually seeing in your goggles. There's a small micro SD card that fits in here and it can record the information that you're seeing. Now this is pretty good for two reasons. One is it allows you to play back what you just did. So if you did some really cool move or you wanted to go back and review your footage, you can do it right on the goggles. And it also allows you to take that footage post it on social media if you wanted to post some of the DVR things, which I've done on my Instagram. And then finally, which is probably the most important reason for it, is it allows you to go back and review the footage if you crashed and you can't find your drone. This way you can look for specific landmarks that you saw in your flight before you crashed, and then you can go and try and locate it and get in a closer area than just kind of randomly walking around trying to find it. And that's personally helped me recover my drone more than once using that DVR to look back and find where I crashed. The pair that I found that have everything that I want and we're still sort of on the cheaper side, obviously I didn't want to drop $1,000 to get a pair of these, was the Fat Shark Attitude V5 kit. 
Now this comes with a battery pack, it comes with the patch antenna, the cloverleaf or omnidirectional antenna with the diversity, it has the DVR, the fan, basically everything that you need and it comes in that slim style of Fat Shark goggles. They're still not super cheap though, they come in over $300, but if you go into Fat Shark's higher end stuff, you're looking at least $600 and that doesn't even come with the receiver for the video feed, so you're gonna have to get that and the antennas and everything separately. So you're looking at close to $700, $800 for a pair of goggles. So that's basically everything you need to actually start flying FPV, but there's one more thing that I would recommend getting before you even start with this extra stuff, and that's getting a simulator. This allows you to get on the computer, get some flight time, get some stick time under your belt, and really understand how an FPV drone flies, because it's totally different than some of the other automated ones out there, like the DJI drones or some of those other companies that have a lot of automation in them and stabilization and safety things that are gonna stop them from crashing. There's two main simulators out there that's gonna give you the most realistic flight controls and sort of flight characteristics. The first one is Liftoff, which is a Steam game. I haven't personally used that one, but I've heard that it's really good and it has some better graphics. And the second one is Velocidrone, which is more realistic, but not as graphics heavy. Mr. Steel did a great video, which I'll link to down in the description below, on how to set that up to get the best PID tune settings to make it really feel realistic to flying a five inch quad. And like I said before, it just gives you some really good practice and stick time before you go into the actual drones, so you're not gonna be crashing it as much. Everything that I talked about today and my current FPV drone setup for beginners is gonna be over on my website, gregfarm.com backslash FPV gear. That link will be in the description down below, as well as links to all of this stuff if you wanted to get it. I'm gonna be doing some more videos kind of covering all of the setup with this drone, this controller, and these goggles. So if you wanna get this exact same setup and have a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to get it from zero to 100, check out the other videos. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos coming down the line on FPV drones, filmmaking, tutorials, all of that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.